we're back in Blender again, and um, this is a uh, follow-up animation tutorial uh, on my previous tutorial on how to make this neon looking effect. So we're going to cover how to make a looping animation and it will look something like this. And uh, we're going to animate the background and we're also going to mess with the text a bit to make it uh, more alive. Make sure you have watched the previous tutorial before you go and uh, join me on this one. So I'm going to start off with adjusting my lamps. I'm also going to just uh, just set my viewport overlays here. You can toggle this on and on and off. Uh, and I want to I want to duplicate and make more of these lights because I want to make this background um, looping. If I, I, I can show you, if I, I select my lamps here, I can also do it in my scene collection. And I rotate with R. And you can see we get these cool like laser streaks going on in the background. I like that a lot. So I'm going to continue with that idea. Uh, I'm just going to adjust my lamp so I have like a circle of point lamps. If you don't have enough of them, just just use Shift D and duplicate a lot of them, so we have enough to make make this animation loop. So here we go. We have some of them a bit tight. Uh, I don't want them too close, uh, just because um, I don't want them to intersect in my scene. I don't want. Uh, to see the light, I want to just have the illusion of the, the light streaks going through this uh, background. So now you have set up your, your lights, just move them, maybe move them a bit more out. It's like a, make them like a, like a circle almost, like this. Then I'm going to shift click and shift and right click in my scene. That set that set my um, 3d cursor right in the middle of my scene now i'm going to hit shift a i'm going to add an empty and i'm going to um, go over to my scene collection on the right side here left click the first point lamp and shift and left click the last point lamp then i'm going to control click my empty as the last object and then over on the left side again Control P. Now I can set all these lamps as a parent to the empty. So I'm going to hit enter. Now you can see all these streaks going through to my empty. And if I move my empty, we have this stuff going on right here. I'm going to press one on my number pad. Before I insert a keyframe here, I'm just going to uh, check my frame rate. And if you are going to uh, render this out in a different frame rate than 24 FPS, please do change it before we start animating and not after. So I'm going to leave mine at 24 FPS and I'm going to move my, my cursor here to frame one and I'm going to hit I and that's the insert keyframe menu pops up and I'm going to um, hit rotation. The first rotation is my empty at zero degrees. Now, if I go to my item here, I can, I can see better my rotation. So the rotation is going on my Y axis. So if I rotate the Y axis here, you can see the empty is rotating. So I'm just going to hit control set and I'm going to drag this all the way to 251. And I'm going to hit 360 on the Y axis. And then I'm going to press enter. And then uh, make sure you press I to, to generate the keyframe. Make sure both your keyframes are selected. They're in a yellow color. And then I hit T on my keyboard and interpolation I want to choose linear now when I hit space you can see that my animation 
is going at full speed from the start and it will just keep going and I won't see the there's no seam here so the um, the animation just keeps going and going because it's looping now I don't I, I think that maybe the um, the animation is too fast for uh, for the background so we can increase this by doubling the length of the animation so I'm just going to do that I'm going to hit 500 frames I'm going to click outside so I deselected my keyframe and I'm going to drag click and drag the last keyframe to 501 and that will be the same as having it on frame 251 so now if we play the animation again with space you can see the um, the lights are moving much slower than they did now for the text so we're going to separate first separate these each letters because they are one separate model right now or separate curve rather click the uh, click the text and hit tab hit alt a to make sure everything is deselected and i'm going to hit b to box select each letter and i'm going to hit p and going to hit separate and i want to do that with every letter so just keep going hit p enter b to box select drag release p enter and so forth and do that with the last one as well p and separate if we now go back to our object uh, mode here we can see that we have all our letters in as separate objects next up we're going to make these flicker in order to do that we're going to select one letter and we're going to go to our shader editor if we increase or decrease the um, the strength of our emission you'll see that this will apply for every object because they're using the same exact shader but we want to make them separate so in order to do that going to our shader tab here and going up to this new material tab so now so now if I turn on my uh, viewport overlays again I can select my N texture or my N and I can drag the intensity independently from the other letters so this um, this this parameter here can also be animated and that's what we're going to do so I'm going to drag this I'm going to type in one and hit enter to like have this faint light going on here and I'm going to hit I to set a keyframe for my emission if I select my uh, end here you can see the keyframe in the timeline uh, and I'm going to to make this flicker I'm going to add increase by 50 frames just drag the, um, the needle here in the timeline and I'm going to increase it to 60 again and I'm going to hit I and now you can see when I when I play it, it will increase in strength. When I, I'm just going to turn off my overlays here to see the animation more properly. Now you can see the the strength is increasing. But I want them to to flicker between these two frames. There's a lot of frames that uh, Blender can use to increase the brightness. But if we take the first frame here and we duplicate it with Shift D and we drag it just before the the last frame here we get this abrupt light shift so now it's you can see if we if we scroll in just a bit more here and we just hit G to grab and I want it to be a one frame difference so now we have this little nifty animation going on here I, I want to decrease the um, the time span between when it's when it's off and when it's on if we make a duplicate of this keyframe right here shift d and drag it a couple of frames forward that's now controlling our on state so now we have uh, this little set of keyframes 
hit Shift D and drag this keyframe set to the right. And I'm just making sure it's overlapping just one frame from the previous one. Now you can see if we turn off our overlay here, you can see that it's flickering on and off like that. So I'll just keep um, moving one frame after the last frame here, hitting Shift D, dragging the set of keyframes to frame 47 here. And I will just keep the animation going like that, on and off. Hit Shift D again. And Shift D again. And I'm just going to keep, keep on doing that. You can also like pull them really far apart to make some difference. Um, like that, and like that. And we have like 500 frames, so just keep doing this for a couple of frames. Uh, and I'll hit, I'm, I'm just hitting Shift D here, just doing it quickly, quick and rough. And something like that. So now you can see we have our N going all blinky. Now we want this effect for our other letters as well. And we don't need to do this for each letter. We're just going to copy the same parameters to every, every text object. And then we're going to offset it so that the text are blinking in different speeds or different times. I'm just going to set my overlays back again. I'm going to select all my text again. Make sure you select the end with the animation, the last, and hit Control L. And I want to get the materials. But now we have every text object again sharing the same shader. So we want to, uh, to offset our animation so that the results are different from, for each letter. So we get this like offset blinking effect. Then we're going to hit, just hit our next letter, the E letter, and we'll go to the um, material properties and we'll hit this new material button. Now we can, while having the E selected, we can select all our keyframes and we can just hit G and we can move them just a bit offset. Now you can see if we toggle off our Overlays, you can see that the N and the E are blinking differently, but the O and the N are still sharing the same material properties as the, um, the first N. I'm just going to repeat the process, uh, putting my overlays back on again to make sure <laughs> to see what I'm doing. Um, make sure you click the O and you press this one to copy the material again. B to box select and just select all my keyframes. I'm just going to move these to the right, G, drag them to the right, turn off my my overlays to see. Yeah, now it looks like the, um, the N and the e, the e and the O are like sharing them more or less the same patterns. It looks kind of cool, but I, I want them to be like all the way random different. So while having the material seven selected, turning back my overlays again, I'm going to hit S and scale down the animation. So the animation on the O will be quicker. Now you can see there's some, um, some different here, difference. And for the N, hit back our overlays, hit A to, um, Select your keyframes. Just gonna drag this one all the way to the right. And now we have our looping animation and this like neon on and off looking effect. So now we're all done with the animation. And the last thing to do is to go over to our render tab uh, and just uh, find a place to render your video. Click the output folder here. I'm just gonna put it on my D drive and I accept it. 
um, for file format, you could either go for a PNG sequence um, if you wanted still images and make a PNG sequence for uh, importing to either Premiere or After Effects, or you can go FFmpeg video, or you can go AVI RAW or AVI JPEG. All is left to do is go to render and render animation. Okay, so uh, that's our animation finished. Uh, it's currently now just playing in a uh, video player in Windows and I set the um, media player to repeat so that it will be a seamless animation. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked it, please leave a like, leave a comment. I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions if anything has been unclear. Uh, please also subscribe and uh, yeah, have a look at some of my other videos if you if you found this one interesting. Thank you.